So find the empty in 2D. So here, to, to limit time, we're just going to focus on one single equation. We are focusing on the Laplace equation, the divergence of the gradient of a scalar function u plus f is equal to zero. Okay. And uh, in particular, let's focus first on, on the very simple case where u is equal to zero at the boundary of a domain. So we have a domain omega, and the boundary of the domain is called partial omega. Okay, so u is equal to zero everywhere uh, on the domain. And uh, here, let's also, uh, for, the, for the purpose of uh, um, simplicity in integrating the, the right-hand side, let's say f is also equal to 1 over the whole space. But even though the solution is going to be non-trivial because of for very com for different geometry, the solution to this differential equation is going to have different shapes, right? Okay. So what is the weak form? How do we derive the weak form of this equation? We use the same uh, same methodology of multiplying a v with the differential equation and integrate over the whole domain. That has to be equal to zero for any v. And we use integration by parts. So v times the Laplace, which is the divergence of gradient of, of u, can be computed, can be, can be integrated by parts. And what we get is this Divergence operator is going to become a gradient operator on V. Okay, so we have a gradient of V, and the dot is still the same, and the uh, gradient of U is still here. So this is integrated over dx. If we have a boundary term, the boundary term is going to be the normal of the boundary dot with gradient of U times V. But here, because uh, we are having a u satisfying the zero boundary condition. Therefore, our test function v should also satisfy the same zero boundary condition because v represents a perturbation on u. Okay, so, so the boundary term goes away because v is equal to zero. And the remaining part is simply v times f dx. This has to be equal to zero. And now from this formulation, we can see that the first term again is a bilinear form, right? And the bilinear form would be an integral of the gradient of u dot product with the gradient of v. Again, it is a symmetric bilinear form. And the integral of v dot f again is going to be a, a linear functional. So, so let's write this as a of u and v, in this case, is integral over the domain, gradient u dot gradient of v, and l of v is equal to integration. Uh, let's substitute the, uh, yeah, let's do, okay. So v times f dx. All right. So what space are we in here? What, in what space would you need to define u and v for the bilinear form and the linear functional to be well defined? What linear space do we have to be in? What functional space does u and v have to be in? H1 again, exactly. So u and v also has to be in H1 because they're respective derivatives has to be square integrable. If I have the derivatives to be square integrable, then I can use Cauchy-Schwarz inequality to guarantee that the weak form is going to be finite, right? The integral of the product of the gradients is less or equal to the product of the integral of the squared, I mean, okay, so, so this is less or equal to uh, integration of grad u dot grad u half times integration of grad v dot grad v half. Right, so so that's 
Um, and if each of these are bounded by the definition of the Sobolev norm, then my AUV is bounded, also called continuous. And uh, uh, the right hand side is going to be bounded by just uh, another Cauchy Schwarz inequality. So this is. Uh, so, so if f is is well defined, if f is also in L two, then I can I can bound this by that, and this occasionally is also well defined, even if f is not a proper L two function. Okay, any questions on the weak form? So this is a and this is L for the two dimensional Poisson's equation.